Here's a conceptual explanation of reason. It's not an audio sequencer. To put it in its most simplified light, it's a rack of stuff with a little sequencer at the bottom. Here's a few key concepts you'll need to get going with the program. I'm sure you can't wait to get a bunch of synths going, but how do we create new synths or effects in our project? Well, there are several ways. First, we can use the Create Instrument or Create Effect options in the Create menu. We can also use the Tool window. The Tool window has a visual list of all the possible devices we can use in Reason called the Device Palette. Just scroll down to the one you want, click on it, then click Create Instrument, or just drag it into the project. The Tool window has other features related to sequencing, which we will cover later in our videos on the sequencer. Knobs and sliders in Reason operate by clicking and dragging in the direction you want to go. If you want to know exactly what value a knob or slider is set to, position the pointer over it and wait a moment. The tooltip will then display the parameter and its current value. By the way, if you find this annoying, you can turn off these tooltips by deactivating the option Show Parameter Value Tooltip on the Preferences General page. Sometimes we can access special context menus by right clicking on the PC, or if you don't have a two button mouse with your Mac, control clicking. For example, we can use a context menu to create new devices, which is a lot faster than going to the create menu every time. If we are using a pattern based device like a matrix, we can quickly change up our patterns using copy, paste, clear, shift, randomize, etc. If the device uses patches, there will be functions for managing patches. If you click on an automatable control, then you'll see parameters related to that control and its automation. If you click in the sequencer, the context menu will contain items related to editing tracks and clips in the sequencer. If you don't know what I mean by these right now, don't worry they are fully explained in the chapters on the sequencer. Now let's learn how to get around the program. Use the scroll bar to go up and down the rack. To get around quickly from device to device, use the Go To submenu. It lists all devices connected to the current device. If you go to a device, it scrolls the rack to bring that device into view. Now let's route some audio. Hit Tab to reveal the back view. To route an audio cable, we can drag an existing cable from where it is to where we'd like it to go. Click on the desired input or output jack on one of the devices and drag the pointer away from the jack with the mouse button pressed. Drag the cable to the jack on the other device. Or we can right click and choose where we'd like to send it. CV cables work the same way. We'll be routing audio cables throughout this entire DVD and we'll give you the entire ins and outs of CV in its own chapter, rest assured. Sometimes Reason will auto route the device for us. There are some rules around auto routing. Let's create a mixer. Have a look at the back. Notice that the mixer is routed to the first available input pair in the hardware interface. The hardware interface is basically the output of reason. Normally you use the first two outputs. The others are if you're using rewire and sending instruments to appear in separate channels in another audio program. We'll cover these concepts in depth in our video on rewire. Let's create a subtractor which is an instrument device. Notice that it auto routes to the first available mixer channel. If I have the mixer selected and create an effect like a reverb, it will automatically route it as a send effect. If there were no free aux sends on the mixer, the effect will be routed as an insert effect after the mixer. If we have our subtractor highlighted and we create an effect, 
even the same reverb, this time it routes as an insert. Notice that effect cables are green. See our videos on effects and the mixer for more details. If we create a matrix while selecting an instrument, in this case, the subtractor, the gate CV on the matrix goes to the gate input on the subtractor, and the note CV from the matrix goes to the sequencer control on the subtractor. Notice that Reason uses yellow wires for CV. This means that the subtractor can now be played by the matrix. If you have no idea what the CV stuff is all about for the time being, don't worry, it's fully covered in our video on CV. If we'd like to add a mastering effect, select the hardware interface and create the mastering combi. Notice it auto routes from the outputs on the mixer. This is the position that people at Propellerhead intend for you to put the mastering effect combis. Notice that when I move devices around, that the routing is unaffected. Just click and drag to move a device. If I would like to reroute them in their new setting, I can choose Disconnect. Then Auto Route Device in the Edit menu, and then it will reconnect them based on their new position. What if we don't want them to auto route? Well, sometimes it can be a nuisance if we're looking to do something specific. On many occasions in this video, I'll have you create devices with auto routing bypassed so we can route it manually and show you the logic behind the signal path. When you create a new device, just hit shift and the device will not be auto routed. If you make a mistake, just hit undo in the edit menu or use Ctrl or Command Z. Or if you want to bring something back, use Ctrl or Command Y. We can have multiple songs open at the same time, but keep in mind they don't necessarily sync to one another. Check out the tips and tricks section for more on this. Now you have all the concepts you need to get the most out of reason. We'll be coming back to them again and again throughout.